Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to your governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. governor had to make decisions over the last couple years how do you want to handle it we wanted florida to be open and free and that's exactly what we delivered and you think about how terrible some of the people in some of these other states were treated you know over the last few years um not even allowed to operate businesses Schools being closed for a year, not allowing access. Obviously, that hurts low incomes and working class families. You know, the politicians and the bureaucrats that would lock down the schools, they would send their own kid to in-person private school most of the time. And so it was a total fraud, but it was very, very devastating what was done. And then you had other states that wanted to force people uh, to take tax or lose their jobs. Or... Or some even want to force kids to do it as a per to be able to go to school. Well, in Florida, uh, as long as I'm around, we will never have COVID shot mandates. just added this to the schedule. I mean, first of all, it's all politics with these people, and they are owned lock, stock, and barrel by Big Pharma. Yeah. Yeah. I think the CDC is basically, and the FDA, they are basically subsidiaries of Pfizer at this point, to be honest. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's ridiculous what's going on. We actually, in Florida, with our Surgeon General, Joseph Ladapo, has yeah. said, We said, uh, as a state, you know, for uh, parents with these with, with kids, and my kids are 5, 4, and 2, but he ain't really anything under 18, um, there's no proven benefit to this, okay? So we recommend against, yeah, you're free to make different decisions, but at the end of the day, it used to be you had to show a proven benefit, and now it's just they want to do. And the reason why they want to do, I think, with the kids is because they want to maintain liability protection for the pharmaceutical companies. And I think it's a huge mistake to give them liability protection because they have no incentive to be honest about some of the things that may happen. So um, we knew though that this could be an issue even though this is now just happening. Now the fear is, okay, since it's on the schedule, school districts are gonna start mandating this like some of these other vaccines that have been around for like 50, 60 years. And um, you don't have to worry about that in Florida, partially because we saw this as a potential last year and we banned it in Florida. I want to thank uh, Dr. Juan Carlos Amesty for having us here at Central Christian University. Look forward to working uh, with Carolina Amesty in the Florida House. I think Fred Hawkins is here. I hope you guys can help him get back to the Florida House. And then, I don't know if he's here, but a congressman from Central Florida will be Corey Mills, will be able to be. There he is, okay. 
Very important. Honestly, like, you don't take anything for granted, but I think they know they can't beat him, and so they're not putting up much of a fight. But um, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we've got a lot of opportunities over the next couple weeks. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that somehow this election's in the bag or get complacent about anything. Because we were half a percentage point away in 2018 from having a much different course for the state of Florida. Oh, and yes. it's not even just the typical stuff. I mean, you know, it would have ended up being uh, woke politics on steroids shoved down your throat 24-7. Yeah. And that just would have been the norm. But then when COVID hit, uh, this state would have been governed like California, New York, and all those states. You absolutely would have had punishing lockdowns. Kids would not have been able to access in-person education. You would have had COVID shot mandates uh, for working and all these other, there would have been vaccine passports in the state of Florida. Can you imagine how, how bad that would have been? So all that would have happened and it would have been basically the worst aspects of California, New York politics imposed here in the state of Florida. But here's the thing, you know, we were that close to having it don't act like that that can't happen in the future. It yeah. absolutely can oh, happen absolutely. in the future if we don't do our part and come out big you know, over the next couple of weeks. So. I think people get it. I think people understand. I think they are more appreciative of who their governor is today than four years ago because they know the difference that it made in terms of leadership and that's at the end of the day what you're talking about i mean you can obviously you want someone you agree with uh but who has the courage of their convictions who's going to be able to stand up for you when nobody else is doing that the media ain't going to stand up for you the left ain't going to stand up for you yep. we know all that so you got to have someone in there that's fighting for you and in order to do that you got to be willing to lead and when i became governor i said i'm not taking polls so no polls since I've been governor. I don't want asked to know finger in the wind to try to figure out whether what I'm gonna do is gonna be popular or not, because I don't think that's the role of a leader. I could take a poll of this room right now on an issue, and that doesn't tell me anything. What, what really is important is if you as a leader set out a vision, if you execute on that vision and you deliver results for people, then what would the poll look like? That's really good. Yeah. So we said we're going to lead from conviction and we're going to think it's right, uh, regardless of, uh, of all the, the different chatter that's out there, because it doesn't bother me, it doesn't affect me, you know, I'm, uh, yes! if, uh, I, they attack me when I roll out of bed in the morning, <laughs> and honestly, it's good feedback, because if they're not attacking me, I think I must be doing something wrong, like I hope <laughs> So we knew that you had to do it. We knew that you had to, to lead, and, and and we knew that you know there's going to be times when you got to run into the fire, and you got to be there, and you got to be able to take that. And so we were able, to, of course, do that during COVID. I mean, a lot of what we did really opened the door for other states to follow through. Because I would take all the flack, and then they could do what Florida was doing, and it wasn't as big. And that's fine, and I don't mind that. And in fact, you know, I viewed it as. If uh, they're gonna come after me and, and throw shoot arrows at me, fine. I would much rather them come after me than come after you. I would much rather... I would much rather govern worried about saving your jobs than being worried about saving my own. I was willing to let the chips fall where they may. That's fine. And as a result of just standing for truth, standing for facts, and not letting the state be overwhelmed with fear and hysteria, you know, we now have more jobs in the state of Florida than we did prior to COVID. We have way more jobs than when I became governor, and we had, we had a lot. Our economy actually grew in the most recent quarter. The U.S. as a whole declined in the most recent quarter. 
100,000 jobs last month. You know, we, if you look at the numbers overall for the country, uh, Biden should be sending me and Texas and some of these other states thank you notes because we're pulling all the way. So we've been able to do that. Our workforce is growing. People have come to want to invest in Florida uh, like never before. We have the largest budget surplus in the history of the state of Florida. Yeah. Uh, three miles. Yeah. Yeah. We are in the most recent budget. We did the biggest tax relief package in the history of the state of Florida. Yeah. And, um, and we're going to do more going forward because if you think about uh, us, all the success we've had, then you have two years ago, you've got this uh, administration come in and what do they do? They declare war on American energy production. And so you now see, not just at the gas pump, although I will say we put in right now, there's a, uh, a fuel tax holiday for Florida fuel tax. Yeah. So we have the fifth lowest gas in the country. I know it's going up everywhere, but at least we're better than most. But they, but they decide to wage war on American energy. They say we need to new, you know, do, do renewables and all stuff. Look, we do more solar than most, most every state, but it is not a substitute to have windmills or some of these things for, for traditional energy. You just can't power an economy and a society based on that. So he's cut back on oil, cut back on gas, the prices have gone, and natural gas has gone through the roof. I mean, that is, and really, you know, utility bills are more for natural gas than anything right now. So you see that in everything people do. And then what is their response to that? Is it to realize that that was a bad policy and to open up? No, it's to beg Maduro for oil or to go to OPEC and ask them, please don't cut production. You know, and the Saudis, they cut production and people say, well, the Saudis are playing politics, doing it right before the election to hurt Biden. And you know what? They probably are. I mean, they don't like him. <laughs> He's playing footsie with Iran. And so they probably are doing that. But what I would say is if we were energy independent, it wouldn't matter what the Saudis did. <laughs> The other thing they did was they printed and spent and borrowed trillions and trillions of dollars coming in and they said basically it was to rescue America because of COVID, but you know, Florida was open. We were booming. I mean, we had tax revenue coming in and it was a historic mistake. And the thing is they were warned about it by economists on the left, not just re Republicans people that work for Bill Clinton and then these other Democrat presidents said, if you do this, you are gonna spark a major inflation. And that's exactly what has happened. Biden and his policies and Pelosi, they have fueled this inflation. When you're paying more at the grocery store, you thank Joe Biden. When you're paying more for bills and everything else you do, you thank them because they are the ones that brought this to the United States of America. Yes. And yes. I just think November 8th is a chance that we get to express our disapproval. Yeah. 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 them all. Pick them out. Yes. So we. Yes. Yes. So you got that, and so so you know now in Florida we're okay. Um, if we obviously, our budget's $109 billion. I mean, they're doing trillions and trillions. Like, we're, we're budget dust in Florida for what we do compared to that. So, you know, we can't compete with the Federal Reserve doing trillions or Biden or Congress. But what we can do is say, okay, you have this inflation. First of all, they said there would be no inflation. Then they said it was transitory. Right. Then they said it was going to peak seven months ago. Yeah. Then they said it's going to start slowing. And it really is hot as ever in many of these important things. So, um, so it's going to be with us a long time until we get some, some new leadership. So what, what can we do in Florida? So what we're going to do is look at the biggest tax relief that we've ever done in Florida history. I just did the biggest. This is going to be much bigger than that. And I'm just thinking, okay, we don't have an income tax, thank God, and we never will as long as I'm here. So you can't cut income tax rates, so how do you do it? So I said, you know, when there's inflation, 
people have to make choices so that you may cut back on entertainment, you may cut back on some stuff. There's some things you just can't cut back on. Like, you know, when it price goes up, you gotta eat it basically. So we're trying to find relief from that. So one of the things you have to do uh, is most people have to commute to work. They gotta show up at work, they gotta do it. So we are going to slash tolls by 50%. Yeah! around here oh my god you will be able this is you know, we have people that spend hundreds of dollars a month in tolls so you're going to end up having people in florida central florida south florida in particular you know you're going to have people save over a thousand dollars on tolls yes. and what we're going to do yes. and, and the way we're going to do it the, the tourists are still going to we're going to charge them full freight <laughs> So the way they'll do it is it'll be full freight. You go through in your sun pass and they will rebate half of your tolls oh, every month. So yes. yes. Another thing that you can't really find a way around is, you know, if you're taking care of, of babies and young kids, you got certain expenses with that. And so what we did in this past budget, we did a one year holiday for things like diapers and wipes and baby clothes with no tax. So no sales tax on any of that. Yeah. You know, when I first became governor, we had a two-year-old and a nine-month-old. Now it's five, four, and two. So the five and four are long out of diapers. Two is kind of on the border. And my wife said, why did you wait till your fourth year to do tax-free diapers? <laughs> well, it, it, it is what it is. But so we saw that and that's, that's I think people appreciate it. But then I said, okay, you know, this is fine, you know, to do it for a year, but there's more than just the, the diapers and all that. I mean, cribs, strollers, incredibly expensive how much some of this stuff is. So we are gonna do permanently no sales tax on all those baby items. Cribs, strollers, yeah. diapers. Yeah, yeah. best governor. Free. And you got to, I mean, look, these are things that you got to do. Uh, certainly when it comes to things like diapers, it's not an easy workaround, so you got to eat those costs. So we're going to take away the tax on that. I think that'll be a big deal. And then the other thing people have to do, uh, they've got to take care of their pets. So we're doing tax-free on all pet food. I think that'll be right. So we're gonna make we're gonna make a little bit dealing with Biden inflation a little bit easier in the state of Florida, and we're happy to be able to do that. And we're gonna continue doing uh, doing what's right. You know, one of the reasons, if you think about Florida, and just understand, like I, I'm just trying to do a good job. I'm not like begging people to move or anything like that. But it's a free country, and people do move, and they leave states that are governed basically by leftist politicians that run it into the ground and then they come uh, come to Florida. How many of you have moved to Florida within the last four years? Okay. <laughs> you escaped California. Okay. God bless you. So, uh, of those who are new within the last four years, how many of you would have moved to Florida if I had not been elected? Would any of you have still done it? No hands, okay. So, it's just something, honestly, you know, I've been helping, I mean, since we've had Hurricane Ian, that's been all consuming, but before that, you know, I took a couple trips to help other governor candidates across the country, because the fact of the matter is, the outcome of governor's races in other parts of the country actually affects Florida. For example, like you look in Georgia, you, know, you have uh, the governor camp running against Stacey Abrams. <laughs> You know, the media doesn't cons call her an election denier, even though she didn't Good accept. Seat. But, uh, and, and look, I think, I think, I think the governor's gonna win. I think it's gonna be good in Georgia. But I will say this, if she were to win, that would absolutely spark refugees from Georgia to Florida, no question. It absolutely would do that. And you look at some of these other places across, um, you know, California, we actually saw more people move once the recall of Newsom failed. They were hoping to get the recall, they didn't, and so then people picked up and said, you know what, I'm done. So this stuff has an impact, 
on Florida because they see if you elect people that are going to implement proven poor policies that will not work, they're not going to sit there and accept the abuse. And one of the reasons why people... So anyway, so we've led the country in net in-migration uh, since COVID. We've had more wealth move into Florida than has ever moved into a state in the similar time period in American history. And But people will ask me, they'll say, wait a minute, they're coming from California. I remember, I was born and raised in Florida. I never saw California license plates until very recently. We start seeing the California license plates and it spooked a lot of Floridians because they're thinking, how are these people gonna vote? Well, here's what I can tell you. When I got elected governor four years ago, there were close to 300,000 more registered Democrats in the state of Florida than Republicans. And before I, never in Florida history, have we had registered Republicans and registered Democrats? Never before. My goal was, you know, maybe uh, over my first term as governor, maybe we can reach parity in voter registration. That was a pretty ambitious goal to go from two set, whatever it was, you know, to get almost 300,000 in the other direction on net. And don't forget, they're still trying to register people too. So it's not like they're static. So, you, so it's tough. So we said we wanted to do it by November of 2022. Well, we did it by November of 2021. We talked about it. Then, so then I'm thinking like a year, a little bit more than a year ago, I'm thinking like, man, I think we're gonna be able to be up, you know, 50,000, 100,000 by the time the 2022 November election comes around. Well, it just kept coming, coming, coming. So right now, November 8th election, first of all, is going to be the first election in the history of Florida ever run where more Republicans are registered than Democrats. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yes! Yes! But we're not up just by 10,000 or 30,000 or 50,000. We have 301,000 more registered Republicans. Yeah! have been voting with their feet. Uh, they are being driven out by some of these really bad policies. And one of the things people will say, you talk to realtors, for example, they'll say one of the things that, that will be uh, brought up is they're coming to Florida because they want public safety. And they don't have yes. that in a lot of these other places. Yes. Yes. And you've seen it. You know, they let, they let Minneapolis burn to the ground uh, in 2020 and with the George Floyd riots and that mayor was like refusing to do anything they didn't call out the National Guard you know when those riots were happening other places I called out the National Guard here we were ready to go we we're not going to let that happen here yeah, yeah. law and order so so they let this happen and I'll tell you this Minneapolis is never going to recover from that. It's dead. I mean, people will not go downtown. A lot of the businesses have left. It's been a total, total disaster. Yeah, you saw that all across the country. And why were they doing that? And what were they saying? They were saying, hey, they want to defund law enforcement. That's what they were calling for. And many places, hey! many places that really slash funding, Seattle, Portland, LA, all these, Chicago, New York City, slash, 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 less people on the street, less support from the community, and the result was murder skyrocketing, other criminal offenses skyrocketing. It was a total disaster, but to put the cherry on that Sunday, it gets even worse because a lot of those jurisdictions elected prosecutors, oftentimes funded by, George by people like George, George Soros. Soros. Funded go to go, and their, their view is, is, you know, they want to, quote, reform the justice system. And the way they are doing that is not by running for legislature and changing the laws you don't like. They're simply nullifying as prosecutors the laws they don't like. So in San Francisco, they said you can steal up to $999 from the store and we will not prosecute you. In Los Angeles... You, want, you talk to the women, they have to take off all their jewelry, anything they may have on, if just to go to the store, even in very nice areas. I was talking to a guy who was visiting there for business. 
He told me he was going to go for a walk after lunch down the street from his hotel. And the bellhop stopped him like, sir, what in God's name are you doing? And he said, I'm just going for a walk down the street. He's like, you cannot walk out with a watch on right now going on. This is one in the afternoon. This is what's going on. So it's absolutely causing these societies to collapse. People are leaving as a result of that. And in Florida, we just said very simply, uh, not on my watch. That is not yeah. Yeah. We love you, Governor. Run, 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 run. We're not going to let you run, run. riot and loot and yes. engage in any type of mob violence here. You're not getting a slap on the wrist of that like they do in Portland. In Florida, you're getting the inside of a jail cell. <laughs> yes. Local government cut off their nose to spite their face by defunding law. And so I sign legislation banning local governments from defunding the police. Yes. Come on, yes. put the money back in. Yes. And we've also been willing to hold prosecutors accountable for yes. not enforcing yes. the law. And one of the biggest problems uh, with the lack of rule of law in this country is happening at our southern border right now. Yes. And you see what's happened. Millions and millions of people pouring across illegally since Biden opened the border in January of 2021. Uh, and you know what? They don't care about the mass illegal entry. They don't care that the cartels are making billions and billions of dollars and are just eating our lunch at the border. They don't care that over 90 suspected terrorists came across the southern border in the last fiscal year. They don't care about that. They don't care about the amount of fentanyl that is coming into our country and ravaging our communities such that it is now the leading cause of death for people 18 to 45 in the United States of America. And there are even teenagers younger than that in Florida and other places who have overdosed and died, and the fentanyl could be something that's hidden. It's a very little thing to do, and you could lose everything. It's incredibly dangerous. And yet, as those deaths have mounted, they haven't cared about any of that. We had, Biden was flying in planes into Jacksonville and all around the country at two in the morning, and some of the one of the illegals he brought into Jacksonville committed a murder in Northeast Florida. We just had a sheriff's deputy in Pinellas County killed by a twice deported illegal alien who came across Biden's border. So they don't care about any of that. They only care when you start sending to D.C., New York, or Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, baby! Yeah! Martha's Vineyard! You know, they say they're sanctuary jurisdictions, and yet you go to have just 50, they sent back the next day. They kicked them off the island. Are you kidding me? So it just shows you that the elites in our country, they want to impose open border policies on the rest of us. But they do not want to live under the consequences of the policies that they champion. And that whole thing was made very clear by how they were treated at Martha's Vineyard uh, by those people. So what we're saying, and actually though, they're going to New York City, all this other stuff, it's like over overwhelming. You actually now have DHS and the Biden administration reinstituting remain in Mexico, at least on a limited basis. And, yes. and at the end of the day, we have an opportunity with Corey Mills and other people we're gonna elect to retire Nancy Pelosi oh, and no Excited to do that. Although I do think this, though, you know, we're gonna win the election, retire. Uh, you know, there was rumors she's moving to Florida. I don't think that's true. <laughs> retire, but you know, this could have been taken care of decades ago if we could just do term limits for members of Congress. When these guys get in, Corey Mills, some of the other people Calvin, running Calvin, Florida, what they Calvin have to do, 
they have to use the power of the purse and the power of Congress to get that border enforced. And they can do it. Yes, it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be easy. They're not just gonna lay down. There's gonna be conflict. The media's gonna attack them. Yes. Uh, but you cannot write Biden a blank check for his priorities until he starts enforcing the law at the border. Yes. So use the leverage that you have and let's start seeing some results. You know, I know a lot of these guys. I did a stint there. I've recovered from the experience. <laughs> But I think a lot of Republicans are sick of being promised all this great stuff and then never seeing them being willing to follow through. Yes. Follow through. If you're willing to stand strong on this, the people will have your back back home. Yes. Another way that we're leading the way is on the issue of education. And we've said in Florida, the purpose of our school system is to educate kids, not to indoctrinate kids. Yeah, yeah, parental rights! Yes. We believe in the rights of parents to play a fundamental role in the education and upbringing of their kids. Yeah, yeah. Our schools, whether it's a school district, whether it's charter schools, whether it's private schools, you know, they all play a very important role, but they do not supersede the rights of parents. Yes. And they're there to help parents and help students uh, not to overrule uh, the judgments of parents on, on core things like forcing them to wear masks. That was wrong and we stopped it in Florida. Yes. We've also made sure that our kids are going to be focused on uh, the basics, on the truth. Uh, we are not going to accept toxic ideologies like critical race theory being injected. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to teach kids to hate our country or to hate each other. We're going to treat everybody as individuals, and we're going to judge them based on the content of their character, Thank not on the color of their skin. Yeah. The things we have to do you know to say look we're all Americans uh, we, we need to you know get on the same sheet of music on kind of core fundamental principles you can obviously have difference on different policy stuff but we should all be united in wanting to defend the founding principles of our country the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and in order to do that I think and what we've done as governor is we've put a big emphasis on our schools in civics education to make that a priority again. Yeah. They need to understand what it means to be an American. They need to understand why we've had people storm the beaches of Normandy or fight in other conflicts in order to defend something that they believed in. And we haven't done a very good job of doing that over the last generation. And I think if we had done a better job of that, we probably would have less divisions in our society right now. So civics education is very important. Yes. Uh, and we're gonna make sure that, that that remains a priority. We also understand, and I have a five, a four, and a two-year-old that my wife are running after all the time. And, um, it's not easy raising kids nowadays. There's a lot of different influences. I mean, they have like these, my kids, they're like five, four, and two. They know these gadgets already. If I leave some, you know, my wife will grab their phone and they know how to like do all this. And you know, we're just like, you know, we kind of want to have the, just, just the basics on some of this stuff. But I think that parents should be able to send their kid to elementary school, watch cartoons, just be kids in our society yeah. Yeah. without having an agenda shoved down their throat every minute. Yeah. to teach kids in elementary school that their gender is a choice. It is wrong oh to tell an eight-year-old that they were born a girl, but they really may be a boy. That is inappropriate to be done in schools. It is being done in other schools and other states. Don't let them tell you they're not. Did you see there's actually parents in Dearborn, Michigan, mostly Muslim American, Arab American Muslims, protesting this stuff being yeah. put in their school. those parents up in Michigan. Yes. They're fighting the right fight. Yes. And so a lot of this, 
I mean, who would have even thought just a few years ago that we would be in a situation where people wanted to jam discussions of sex in elementary school with these students? I mean, it's just crazy. But nevertheless, you know, that's where we find ourselves. So we had a bill called the Parents' Rights in Education. Yeah! And you know, and some of this is like, you know, the legislature, in a legislative session, there's a lot of stuff going on, they're working all these bills. Like, I'm not following every bill, and I, quite frankly, I wasn't necessarily even following this one on everything, but the media and the left, they get in a tizzy on this, and you know, some of it is, I think, like, you know, yeah. whatever I, like, if I say the sky is blue, they will say the opposite. That's just the way they are. Um, so you start to get this, and they start to get real wound up. So I was like, myself, I was like, what is the latest on this bill? Show me this language. And it says none of this stuff in, in, in elementary school. And I'm like, that is the hill they're going to die on? Is that really something they think people want? I tell you, parents, regardless of political persuasion, do not want this in elementary school. That's just the reality. Yes. So... So it's going, and honestly, I think I think the people on the left understand that. Uh, I don't think that they. You, you you watch. They're not running elections here, saying I am gonna that they're gonna bring this into kindergarten because they know they will lose if they do that. And so they 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 understand that. So what they thought they could do is okay. It's not something that we want to run. We know we can't win elections on this, but maybe if we can pressure corporate America to come down and come against it, then maybe the governor will back down. And you know, it's not a bad strategy because there have been Republican governors who have caved to corporate pressure gotcha. when it relates to some of these issues. And so so they got um, enlisted a company that, I don't know, you guys may have heard of around here. You <laughs> say no to Disney. And um, and honestly, I, I don't know, I, I think it was a mistake. I think this was driven more, more by the California side of that. I don't think most of the people in Florida uh, were, were interested in, in having gender ideology be injected into classroom uh, instruction, but nevertheless, uh, that's where we are. And so people started saying, oh, well, you know, Disney's going to get involved in this. You know, the governor, he's not going to be able uh, to, to do it. They're just too powerful and all this stuff. And I just said, you know what? Um, they don't run the state of Florida. We run the state of Florida. So we signed the bill and everything. And, but, you know, after we signed the bill, they came out and said it's our mission as a company to see the parents' rights in education repeal and really take a hard position into the future on this. And, you know, you're, you have a right to do that. But at the same time, uh, Florida has put this one company on a pedestal for decades. Yes. They have their own government right down the street. Yep. They're exempt from laws that their competitors have to follow. They get major tax breaks. And so what we said is, you know, you may have a right to advocate for this. We don't think it's smart. Honestly, it's not good business as it turns out. Nevertheless, you know, you could do it. But you don't have a right to force us to subsidize your activism. And we're not going to subsidize it. And so we work with the legislature and we took action. And so now because we did that, uh, Disney is no longer going to have its own government. Yes! So we're, um, but at the end of the day, it just means all you got to do is just stand up for what's right. Yes. Okay? Don't let, you know, just because someone may have power, that doesn't mean you back down. Because what, what we're seeing, I think, particularly with Florida, uh, is the truth is very powerful. Uh, the truth can penetrate through these lies. The truth uh, really hits people because there's so little of the truth being said now. So there's a premium when people are willing to stand up and defend it. And so that's what we've done in Florida. And I think that we have an opportunity uh, to really cement the direction of our state uh, with this election on November 8th. You know, part of being a free state is, yes, freedom from mandates, which understand those mandates will come uh, if you let them come and elect the wrong people. Don't think you're out of the woods on any of that. You are absolutely not out of the woods if this election doesn't go the right way on the kids' school mandates for, for, for COVID shots. 
that will happen if if we're not here to defend you guys. So just understand, there's a lot of stuff. This has not been foreordained, preordained. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, but I think that uh, we served in Florida as really a beacon of hope for a lot of people throughout our country and really throughout the world. Oh, I've had yeah. people write into yeah. me. Yes. I've had people write into me from Australia, New Zealand, and writing into our office talking about how it's really been tough times in some of those areas because their rights were basically eviscerated and how here in Florida, you know, we were standing up for people. You know, we fought the machine. We fought uh, people like Dr. Fauci. Yeah! yeah! Fire Fauci! Lock him up! You know he's now saying that he never supported closing schools. He's actually trying to say that. And he said he never supported lockdowns. That's what he's now saying. Even though he was always criticizing us for doing uh, open business and, and schools being open. So, so you have that. Uh, but part of, I think, the reason uh, that, that we're a free state is because we are protecting people against indoctrination by woke ideology. We yes. can't let woke ideology take over every institution in our society. And so Florida, we're fighting back on all fronts. So the whole Disney thing, you know, was, was yeah, that bill was important, uh, but it's also just setting the parameters um, about who governs society and governs our state. And I think we made it clear that, uh, yes, we view woke ideology as a threat, in the legislature by leftist politicians, of course. We view it as a threat with some of these local leftist politicians who are in charge of do. But we also understand we're not just gonna sit idly by if a corporation is trying to impose a woke agenda on our state. We're gonna fight back on all fronts and we're gonna make sure we preserve for you uh, breathing space so you can think and act the way you want to regardless of what the elite say. Yeah! Yeah! So the questions are, are you going to stand strong over the next few weeks? Yeah! 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 Are you going to rustle up some votes from your friends and your yes, neighbors? Yeah! Four more years! Four more years! Are you going to make sure that we do, I don't know about Orange County, but the whole Central Florida area? Yeah! yeah! Are you ready to make sure that we keep Florida free? Keep Florida free!